Okay, so hi there everyone. Uh, welcome back to our course in statistics. And in this video, we're going to show uh, introduction to inferential statistics, um, the, the brief uh, details of everything regarding inferential stats. So again, this is our A and let's start with some, with some objectives. So by the end of this lesson, you will, um, you're expected to learn these uh, things here. Um, first, we're going to talk about the purpose of inferential statistics. The assumptions uh, before using uh, such statistics, um, the branches of inferential stats, namely estimation and hypothesis testing, and uh, determine the appropriate statistical test to use. Uh, is it a parametric or non-parametric test? So let's start with um, some introductions. Um, in the previous course, uh, in, in Psych 101, that's the course that we have dealt with before in descriptive statistics, um, we discussed the general philosophy of the formal statistical inference, only the introduction of, of what inferential statistics is. And um, when we say in statistical inference, this consists of those methods which one makes inferences or generalizations or conclusions, shall we say, about a single population. Okay, so um, let's go back to an overview of um, statistics. Recall that we have... Um, descriptive statistics at the top part, and it, um, we have the next topic of probability. Um, I hope you guys remember that. And why do we need to have this probability? Because probability is the bridge from descriptive statistics going to inferential um, statistics. So that's basically why we need to learn statistics. In order for us to appreciate the, the results that uh, statistical inference uh, give us, we need to have a basic notion of probability for us to do so. So um, that uh, brings us to the next part. Why do we need to learn inferential stats? Um, this mainly helps us in decision making. They uh, establish or statist inferential statistics establish numerical benchmarks and a lot more. Um, again, this includes formal reliable conclusions or forming reliable conclusions, generalizations, and decision-making starts with this hypothesis testing. Okay, um, inferential statistics is also called as inductive statistics. That's according to the APA Dictionary of Psychology. Um, you, can, you can always remember the or recall the definition of inductive thinking, wherein it starts with specific going to general. Um, similarly, with uh, inferential statistics, we start with the specific. Um, in, in this case, an analogy would be the data. And with that data, uh, we're gonna apply um, things that we do in statistics, like you know the COPI, uh, we collect, organize, present, and analyze, um, and interpret data. And in such a way that we can give it back to the general populace, you know, your population, and we will generalize through that. So you can always go back to that um, definition there. Um, we always want to remind ourselves that good decisions always give us success and improvements and bad decisions cause serious problems and conflicts. So in order for us to uh, go ahead with the parts, next parts of the lesson, we need to recall population versus sample. And uh, we need to recall this uh, mnemonics. Population is the complete set of individuals um, or organ um, organizations or maybe organisms that you are getting data from. That's what we call param a population. And a parameter is any characteristic from such population. Okay, so say you will get the, the mean of that population or the standard deviation of the population. We call those parameters. On the other hand, we have a sample. A sample is a small part of the population which uh, should represent the population. So we want to put that in mind, no? right? So a sample is a subset but a representative of the population. If we're going to do or get some characteristics from the sample, we call such characteristics as statistic without the S for singular and S with the S, of course, for plural, which makes it kind of confusing with the subject, but I hope you won't be confused. Um, some example of statistics are sample means, uh, sample medians, sample variances, and etc. Um, here are some examples uh, and, you know, the source and examples of parameters and statistics. Uh, one thing that you may see are 
or is that parameters are mostly Greek letters and statistics are mostly in the or from the English alphabet. Okay, so uh, let's have some a little bit of exercise. You can pause the screen to answer such. Um, we decide whether the numerical value describes a population parameter or a sample statistic. So we have one and two. So you may pause the video. Okay, so hopefully you have the answer already. For number one, a recent survey of a sample of 450 college students reported that the average weekly income for students is 3,250 pesos. So um, in this case, since we are getting the value from the sample, it will be straightforward that this is taken from a sample statistic, right? For number two, the average weekly income for all student workers is 450 pesos. Since this is talking about the all, we have, you know, a quantifier which talks about everybody. So that's going to be a population, no doubt. And that's going to be a population parameter for number two. So the answers are number one would be a sample statistic and number two is a population parameter. Okay, so let's move on. And I want to highlight this slide over here. This is a, quite an important one. Statistical inference is the act again uh, and again. We want to um, highlight this part. Uh, that's why redundancy is one thing that I'm doing in this case. Um, the act of generalizing from a sample to a population with a calculated degree of certainty. So that is to say that um, what we basically wanted to do is to learn about the population parameters, right? So we want to, to get the the value or the information from parameters not from statistics right but we want to get the values from parameters but we are restricted we can only get in reality you can refer i would want to refer you back to our lesson in sampling that in reality we can only be um we say we are only available it's only available for us to get the sample not the population so okay that's the reality of life but we want to get the information from the population. So this is where it plays the game, right? So for if you have the population, this is the bigger thing here. Um, what we do is we get a sample or we do the process of sampling in this case. So from the population, we're going to get a, 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 um, a representative of that population. We call it a sample right here. We're going to gather those data from the sample. We're going to apply statistics from those data. So you know statistics, right? Um, we collect, we organize, we present, we analyze, and then we infer. This is inference, uh, inferences or doing some inference. Infer. We when we infer, we go back to the parameter. That's why you know you can recall hopefully from our previous lessons that descriptive statistics only deal with the copa, okay, the collection, organization, presentation and analysis of data but when i the copy for it to be complete including the infer verb the infer or getting an inference we go back to the inferential stats so this is where you know this this simple diagram here um summarizes the the, the procedure of inferential statistics and why we're doing inferential stats because we only have data from the sample Okay, so I want you to, to think of that. We have the data from the sample, but we are interested to discover something from the population. Now, that getting or, you know, just getting the descriptives from the sample wouldn't be enough to give justice to the population values or population parameters that we would, in the first place, want to discover. So inferential stats bridge that gap from, from uh, the data, from the, um, the not getting everybody's data. So instead of getting somebody's data, some, only the sample's data, and we want to give back the, the generalization, going back to the, you know, to the population, we use inferential statistics. Okay, I hope I made it clear. I'm going to go to the next slide. So what are the assumptions of inferential stats? So again, this allows conclusion about the population. Um, applicable only. Um, not I cannot say only, but hopefully you would... Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, one thing that you one could consider. Um, inferential stats is applicable when you 
apply probability sampling that is one with randomness hopefully you can remember that probability sampling includes simple random systematic random stratified cluster and you know multi-stage and um you can you, you know you can you can always firstly do the inferential stats using non-probability sampling such as convenience purposive um, sampling techniques but the results might be you know not that generalized well because uh, sampling was not done randomly so that's just some things to consider um what are the branches of statistics we're just gonna highlight uh two branches the hypothesis testing and estimation for the rest of the videos, um, I think you can see that we have focused more on uh, hypothesis testing rather than in estimation, which I'm just going to give you a glimpse of estimation. We have two types of estimation, point estimate and interval estimate. So um, estimation has or deserve one chapter or a, 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 another set of videos um, in this matter. But uh, for now, we're going to highlight on hypothesis testing. All right. So though I would want to show the key concepts of statistical estimation. So the main idea is we have the population. We cannot gather everybody's data. OK, fine. We're just going to get a random sample in that matter. And uh, every member of the population, as far as it's random, has a chance to be part of the sample. And remember that when we get any characteristic from the sample we call it a statistic any characteristic from the population is called a parameter now this process of taking this statistic and representing it as a parameter is what we call the process of estimation um i'm gonna stop right there that's going to be the main gist of estimation like i said this topic deserves uh a wide range of videos but for now we're gonna highlight on hypothesis testing so i'm just gonna this is just uh, uh merely a scratch on the surface so we're gonna go ahead um we're gonna talk about then appropriateness of inferential statistical tools in hypothesis testing and uh, always remember that the level and the scale of measurement as well as the type of variable play important roles in the choice of what statistical tool to use, especially in hypothesis testing. Um, we would always want to highlight the usage of parametric tests. They are more strict. Uh, parametric tests are actually strict. It requires at least interval. So it should only be under the, the scale or the level of interval or ratios uh, scales that is to, to say quantitative and the distribution of the data must be normal or approximately normal wherein we can we can highlight the use of central of the central limit theorem so we can we can say it's normal or approximately normal if your threshold your sample size uh, one of the statements of the central limit theorem is that when your sample size is um, at least 30 so that's that's uh that's one thing to consider for parametric tests and um basically parametric tests are the standard in in inferential stats as much as we want we always would like to use parametric tests they're robust they're more powerful um, they require a small but enough sample size than parametric tests and parametric tests relies on the assumption that random samples are selected from normal populations or approximately normal populations. Um, on the other hand, non-parametric tests are used are used in cases where parametric tests are not applicable. So we would always want to apply parametric tests, but if the assumptions are not met, we're gonna go directly to non-parametric tests, right? So they're like the how do they call this days? Um, uh, like the rebound, shall we say, non-parametric non tests are rebound to uh, parametric tests. Um, according to Chin and Lee in 2008, they're about 95% as powerful, um, but we'll not rely on that percentage. We always will want to highlight parametric tests.
what are some common situations uh, for using non-parametric tests, which are as follows? So uh, it's not normal. The distribution is not known, or it is known as also called as distribution free. The sample size is too small uh, to assume a normal distribution. It has a lot, or you know, there are really extreme values or outliers. Remember that the um, usually in in tests of difference, we're testing the means. So if there are outliers there, we can we can recall that the means are sensitive to outliers. So we should be very careful with that. And the variables are in nominal or ordinal scale. Okay, so, you know, it should be at least in terms of, so a big no-no for nominal and ordinal scale, right? Okay, so let's summarize this video right now. So in this lesson, we have learned the purpose of inferential stats, um, assumptions for using inferential stats, the two branches, which are estimation and hypothesis testing, and the difference between parametric and non-parametric tests. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, bye for now. There are a lot of things right after this, and I'm, I'm gonna see you in the next video. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and see you soon. Bye.